speaker will have two minutes, and there will be a notification on 30 seconds. Thank you. All right, so we're going to start with the gallery session. So uh, whoever's coming to speak, fill that slip. Those are the only people that can speak right now. If you didn't fill out a slip and you're a member of the public, I'm sorry, you had your chance before the meeting to fill out one of these slips. So, so each, uh, each person has two minutes. Right? Uh -huh. Frano, our Sergeant at Arms, has a 30 second um, uh, board that you need to pay attention to because after 30 seconds, when your time is up, that is it. And you can, at most, only entertain two questions uh, from the board members only. Only two questions. So remember, remember, board members, you ask one question, somebody else asks another question, that's it. Um, so I'll call up the first speaker. And that will be our own Marcy Gross. Okay, I'll make it real quick. Um, one, actually I have a couple of major issues. The first one is the federal regulation to remove bed rails from beds in nursing homes and hospitals. What? So I sent a letter to the president. I sent it for return receipt requested. Um, while he's battling other issues, he may as well take this one on as well. It's been going on since the last administration. And uh, even though some people see bed rails as a detriment or a constraint, I don't. Uh, you can put pads on bed rails. Um, they help people from falling out of bed, um, so they're protective. It's a major, major issue. People have fallen out of bed since this started um, two years ago, and we're one special facility, um, personal to me, uh, the very first day they um, put, they removed the bed rails from someone on the seventh floor, he fell and cracked his head. So this is something that if I can get the community together, maybe get a petition together, I'd like to do that. It's very important. Bed rails are a protective device. I guess it's a, a personal um, opinion, um, but actually once we get the numbers together, it won't be personal anymore. It'll be factual. Uh, next thing, um, I called up Iggy from Department of Sanitation. I was walking down the street, Wallace Avenue, 10 to 6 this evening. I'm usually in New Jersey at this time. People walking the doors, poop right in the middle of the street, no one picked it up. Third thing, um, Lindy Hop, dance. Dance is the best exercise. Um, I have a dance party. I go to my professional dance instructor certified. I make sure people dance. If you're around me, you're going to dance. Even if you're well, you can't walk, you can't, you got to shake something. Mm. So the party's in Manhattan, and we want to bring it to the Bronx if we can. So there you go. That's my announcement for this evening. And um, I have a few of these flyers on the table near Chris. All right? Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? No, Marcy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Marcy. We love your bedazzled jeans. Uh, <laughs> Excuse the mispronunciation, Daba Bisferon, Daba from about an event. I'm not sure exactly what event it was. Hello, um, it's Dave Lloyd Sferon, um, I go by Dave, and uh, I am here to let you all know that I am a four-time Bronx uh, Council on the Arts uh, awardee, and I have a performance coming up called Time to Talk at BAD, which is over by um, Brooklyn. Westchester uh, oh. Square, and it is in relation to race and education, um, in terms of me being raised in the Bronx and never quite fully understanding um, racism. And so through dance, I kind of look at racism as it applies to uh, education. And I think it's an important conversation that all people should be um, interested in. So come see me. I have flyers about the performance. And um, you should see where your, you know, what your Bronx grantees are up to. Any questions? 
All right. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Eric Nicholas, Mass Mutual. But I have to do this because I. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, my name is Eric James Nicholas. Unfortunately, I have three first names, which makes life pretty difficult. Uh, I'm an advisor. You can't hear me? All right. I didn't know if I was going to be too loud with the microphone. Uh, I'm an advisor with Mass Mutual. And uh, my partner, Rosario, here. Uh, the reason why we're here, we're meeting with all the different community boards. This is the seventh board that we've met with. Uh, in regards to an initiative of bringing financial literacy to people here in the Bronx in regards to life insurance. Uh, my partner and I met with Ruben Diaz's office about a month and a half ago. Uh, and one thing that we have noticed being in our office from Long Island, we have an office of 250 people. Nobody crosses the bridge and comes to the Bronx. That's right. Everybody is focused on Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, Long Island, Manhattan. Nobody makes that effort to come up here. So our goal is to do whatever we can in regards to sponsorships or uh, holding workshops for the people in the Bronx to uh, help people better understand the need for life insurance and how devastating it can be on family for those that pass away prematurely without it. Uh, what we do also is not uh, segregated just to life insurance. We do other things as well, but that is where our heart and where our focus is. Uh, did I hit the 30 second mark already? No. no. All right, so one thing, we live in a social media world, and I'm sure that we have all seen somebody, whether it be in our family or somebody else's, that has passed away prematurely without life insurance. And one of the first things that we see on Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is the very next day, is a GoFundMe page. And while it is a fantastic tool to raise money for a specific cause, it is not an appropriate way to protect one's family. Uh, so we are here to do whatever we can. I brought some folders that I'm gonna leave with us in the back. Uh, and I also brought some business cards just in case anybody has any questions. We wanna be a resource to the people here in the Bronx as well. Thank you very much. Great. thank you. That's Mariella Salazar from Montefiore. Just think of me. Just think of me. Should I answer that? Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Mariella Salazar, and I am a government and community relations manager at Montefiore. Today, I wanted to share with you two upcoming events. The first one is a Know Your Rights Forum with the Legal Aid Society um, that will be hosted on Monday, April 3rd at 9 a.m. Uh, this Forum will discuss some of the topics of concerns, which are executive orders, Muslim ban, deferred action for childhood arrivals, temporary protected status, and the rights of undocumented and documented immigrants. Um, the reason why this forum was uh, created within Montefiore, or I should say originated within Montefiore, was that there were several departments who were interested on the subject. Um, as opposed to us leaving it only for those departments, we decided to open it up for all, being that it's one of those topics that many people are interested in. So again, it's going to be held on Monday, April 3rd at 9 a.m., and that will be at our Moses campus, which is the 111 East 210th Street, and I left some flyers um, on the desk. The other one is a 5K run with the Frog Zoo, um, and that will be held on Saturday, April 29th, and this is done, uh, Montefiore is one of the sponsors of the event. Um, I believe it starts around 7 a.m. And with this coupon again, which is also at the, at the table, you get a $5 off um, from your purchase. And once you register, um, you will have access to the Bronx Zoo, not only that Saturday for the run, but also that Sunday. So you can take advantage and it's worth the cost being that all the soft donations go to um, the Wildlife Conservation Society. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's Mike, one of the right there. Okay. On the Know Your Rights for the hospital, uh, that's for hospitals and nursing homes, because I know that Montefiore has a full floor in um, one of the nursing homes here in the Bronx. So there's a little bit of a difference between Know Your Rights between hospitals and nursing homes. They'll be representing both sides of the story, is that right? So this is not necessarily for like hospital associates. It's for everybody. It's just general information about the current landscape of immigration within, under the Trump administration. I'm talking about the patients and the residents' rights. They should know that there's an ombudsman. Aside from anything else, human life is human life. I'm not interested in immigration, non-immigration. When you're in a hospital, you want someone to keep you alive. 
So that's what I'm concerned about. Absolutely. Okay. And I mean, Thank if those you. questions are concerned, we'll definitely make sure that they're addressed. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else? No, I just want to thank you once again for making sure the doors weren't locked. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Tony, Tony helped with that too. Sorry. She was on the park. All right, Dawn from the New York Public Library. I'm not sure anymore. Hi, everyone. I represent Mars Park Ranch. I came with flyers tonight. Uh, for our free English classes. Registration is opening April 6th. The flyers are at the desk. Also, I brought early, I mean, adult literacy information, people who want to improve their uh, reading and writing skills. There's a flyer also located at the desk. Uh, we have some early initiative, uh, early literacy kits that are available for the community. So if any of you are having an event and need some library swag, I'm your girl. Also, the summer months are coming. I'd love to see some police, bicycle police, in front of the library between the hours of 2.30 and 3.30 to help us with clap crowd control and hanging out in front of the entrance. That's it for me. Okay. Sure, we got Yeah, we're Jay and everybody. Hello, I'm Officer Medeiros. I'm Kirk Convention of 49th Precinct. Um, this is an everyday occurrence, or is it specific? Well, it's an everyday occurrence, but we go outside, uh, the team and I, to tell people to move away from the front, go to the park, go to the schoolyard. But once the summer months come, mm -hmm. it's going to intensify, I'm sure. It's cold right now, so people want to come inside. But once it gets warm, they may linger. And because we're doing programming, servicing the information desk, the circulation desk, we would love to no. be able to rely on you guys to support us in just keeping no. the area clear of kids playing ball in front of the branch, that kind of thing. Uh, what time is it? Between 2.30 and 3.30. Right, thank you. We'll see what I can do. Thank you. Anybody else? And just to clarify that issue, so not too long ago, a month or two ago, mm -hmm. we had somebody arrested in front of the library. Um, there's a PS83 student, <laughs> or nine. The library can bar that person. It's up to how many months? Six months or yeah, more? Yeah, for a teen, it's six months. So any New York Public Library institution. So if she gets, or somebody gets barred from her branch, that, does, that means they can't go to the Pell Parkway branch Correct. and use their services. So the only the stick to that is you kind of need to know their name and address. Right, and the good thing is, is that I have a good relationship with the school around the corner. So I email him, I give him the student's name, and he's able to get the parent to get in touch with me so we can get the phone number, address, and have a follow-up conversation with our security investigators. Uh, thank you. Sean Petty, New York State Nurses Association. Make a window. Make a fix it. Good evening, everybody. Um, I, my name is Sean Petty. I work in the pediatric emergency room across the street at Jacoby Medical Center. Um, I'm, uh, first of all, I want to um, really uh, deeply thank the, the community board and in particular the members of the health committee. Uh, we've been in communication uh, for about a month now about some pretty worrisome changes that are happening at our hospital, um, in particular in, in the, the pediatric uh, uh, children's health services. Um, we, um, you know, we often, you know, our 12 hour shifts and, and, and you know, taking care of, taking care of kids and, and, and doing what we can when we're, when we're at the hospital. We, we try to raise a lot of issues, but we don't often get listened to. So I really appreciate, I, I really have found the community board here and, and, uh, very um, communicative and open and willing to listen to our concerns. So I just, first of all, I wanted to really thank um, everybody for their, for, their, um, for their open ears. Um, we continue to really have 
um, some ongoing changes. Um, our, our pediatric intensive care unit is um, continuing to um, not accept uh, critically ill patients because of uh, changes in um, the doctor's care. Um, there is um, restrictions on some of the admissions that we are able to make, um, and there's um, some ongoing issues with, with staffing. So I wanted to, I know that the hospital had sent a response to the letter that a community board sent to them, and I was kind of disappointed with that response. I don't think it gave very many answers. And so I just wanted to see what the community board thought. I know Jeremy got uh, uh, the letter back. I just wanted to see what you guys thought about the answers that the hospital gave. And also invite people to the um, town, uh, town home. So I know the health committee got that, not the full board. So it's, it's I, I guess it's really up to you guys you want to see those responses. I did plan on sharing them when I submit my written DM report, but I can just forward the email on pretty quickly. And, um, yeah. So any questions for the speaker? Marcy? I didn't get the letter. Did you email it? Yeah. I did. Sandy, you saw it, right? Yeah. Can you resend it, please? Yep, yeah, I'll resend it. I'll just send it to the entire board, if that's OK with everybody. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Marsha Lewis, six, uh, let's see, issue is parks, Bronx, Bronx, Bronx Park East. Yeah, my usual complaint about the parks at Bronx Park East. The construction is finished, but they still have not removed the fencing, nor the netting, nor the construction cones throughout the park from Pelham Parkway North to Allerton Avenue, and it looks really bad for the neighborhood. It looks, we have orange netting up. It looks like a crime scene. They've got whoever paid the last check to the construction company who did the work in the park, they've got to get them to come back there and take their equipment out. The green um, netting at Waring Avenue, there have been two crimes that have occurred in the past year where the perpetrators have been hiding behind the green netting. It's got to come down. We've got to get the park open and clear. Maybe it's been about a year I've been saying this. And Ms. Gross, just to counterpoint the bed rails. I worked in nursing homes for 40 years. Bed rails up with a demented person can increase the likelihood of an injury because their legs get caught. But they're also having bed rails up, depending upon the level of alertness, is a good way to help the person be able to turn themselves. So the option has to be there for nursing and whoever evaluates whether or not a bed rail should be up, one should be up. And if they're going to change the beds with no bed rails, I'd like to see it where they can change the beds where they go low down to the ground. Thank you. When the beds go down to the ground, the wheels start rolling. That's number one. Because in the bedroom. Number, exactly. So Take we don't the wheels want off. That. Number two, we have bed pads, the pads that go on the railings themselves to prevent people's arms and legs from getting caught. The regulations also indicate that if the mattress and the bed rail, the distance is less than four inches, that will suffice so no one gets their heads or arms or legs stuck. So there is an answer, there's a solution. Yeah, it, it really, they have to be evaluated. Right. They have to be evaluated. But, but sometimes climbing over the rail is yeah. more dangerous than not having the rail and falling on the pads on the floor. But falling on the pads on the floor, I'm a dancer, I've fallen, and I've turned black and blue. And I'm much younger than somebody who's in a nursing home, age 80, 90. No, they can I, I've, they I've seen both sides. I yes. just wanted to yes. say this. <laughs> You didn't mention the All right, um, and then so Marcia, in terms of the Bar Bronx Park issue, I'll put on my district service cabinet meeting agenda. So if you could just you know give us a call at the office to follow up. All right. Then also the two below trees at the end of the trail, the path up to Bronx Park um, Botanical Gardens, and the sticker bushes are still there. I saw kids going into the sticker bushes with the snowfall. It was very poor planning. It's got to be. It's got to be rectified. That's it. Yes. Right, thank you. Uh, Jean DeFrancis, oh. Allergy Merchants Association. Good evening. Uh, first, I want to start, since Tyrone is here, by um, thanking the 4-9 precinct. We had a missing person uh, this morning. You guys did a fantastic job. 
Uh, and on behalf of Valentin and the Merchants Association, we want to thank you. Um, we have a couple of events coming up. April 2nd, uh, we're celebrating that, which is uh, WrestleMania at the Gasolina Lounge. And so uh, come see me if you want to uh, want to attend. And basically, it's a community get-together for everybody to get together and have a good time and uh, celebrate that, which is also spring. Uh, April 4th, we're having our anniversary a gala. If you would like uh, tickets or uh, take out an ad, please come see me afterwards. I won't mention it now because I don't think that's appropriate. And April 15th, we're having uh, Easter Bunny at the Sands again. So uh, the kids can come meet the Easter Bunny and tell her eggs. And uh, you can take a free photo with the, uh, with the bunny. Um, also regarding uh, furniture. For the, for the corridor, for the Allison Corridor. We've been talking with DOT, and hopefully before uh, spring really starts getting into gear, we can have a couple of bike racks, uh, especially uh, some new trees and uh, benches for the seniors to sit as they walk up and down the avenue, so it's a little easier for them. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Right. Questions? Uh, last but not least, Raphael Schweitzer. My body shape is head. Good afternoon, everyone. Raphael Schweitzer, head of Bronx Park East Community Association. I'm here to speak about Deputy Inspector Keith Walton. Um, as was previously mentioned, someone mentioned about a bike patrol. Deputy Inspector Walton was actually the commanding officer to institute the bike patrol, which I believe was a first in New York City, but it was definitely the first bike patrol in Fortnite Precinct. Uh, personal situation, a um, couple blocks from my parents' house, 2916 Kruger Avenue used to be filled with, um, I'll just say, negative characters. Deputy Inspector Walton, along with the Fort Nye Precinct, got those people who live there. They don't live there anymore. The block is quiet. The neighbors aren't complaining anymore. So I just wanted to say that Deputy Inspector Walton had a permanent positive impact on this community board. And I, along with several other residents, members of the clergy, um, and other people within the Bronx and within New York City have come to attend his court hearings the past three times. And I just want to inform everyone on his next court hearing next Tuesday, March 28th at 9 a.m., 265 East 161st Street, if you would like to attend. Please come around 8.30, 8.45, as you do have to go through security, so it, it takes a bit, a bit of a while. But people being there, the first court hearing, we had nine people. The second one, we had about anywhere between 25 and 35 people. And it makes a big statement to the judge, to the media, to the people of New York City, that I and we, whomever we is, stand behind our captain. I still call him my captain when I text him, when I email him, he's still my captain. No matter what was said in the media, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a decision, it's a, it was a hard decision, you know, should I support him? But you have to look within yourself, look in Ca Captain Walton's eyes, and you know, he appreciates all the support that he has gotten. And if you do support him, please come next Tuesday, 265 East 161st Street, Bronx Hall of Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And we'll move on to um, elected officials. We're going to... Uh, so, uh, we're going to take a new... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 496, sorry. Hello, everyone. I'm Officer Medeiros of 496. Um, I'm here to just give you a quick overview of what's going on in the precinct. In the last um, last 28 days, we've been doing pretty well. In terms of crime for the year, we're actually down 10% overall for major index crimes. That being robberies, uh, murders, uh, burglaries, things of that nature. In two categories for the last 28 period, 28 day period, we are up in two categories. That would be robbery and grand larceny. Um, in terms of robbery, we are up by one complaint as compared to last year, basically 14 to 15 uh, this year. And in terms of grand larceny, we are up by five. Um, that's from 28 last year to 33 this year. So in terms of the no. the increases, it's not that much, and we are working to uh, correct those increases as we go forward. Um, real quickly, in terms of crime patterns that are happening happening um, in this command, we had a burglary pattern of residential um, houses in the Van Nest neighborhood. Um, we have closed that pattern due to an arrest. We caught the person that 
is doing it, and he is currently um, locked up. Um, in terms of another robbery pattern that's actually considered a citywide robbery pattern, um, that we got hit a few times. One was on the 3000 block of Boston Road. Uh, we got hit twice on Allison Avenue in terms of a man going into commercial establishments with a gun, robbing the place. Uh, he has also been captured, um, so that's, that's done. In terms of new crime patterns, we have a uh, crime pattern at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, no. Basically, the crime pattern Drunk is people going probably, into that lot, yeah. Home Depot, Chuck E. Cheese, a shared lot, and basically breaking into cars. So uh, great. The, wow. We also have another crime so pattern uh, just next door at the 1700 block of East Gunnell Road, um, the shopping plaza next door. It's at the uh, Planet okay. Fitness. People breaking into lockers there. That kind of fitness um, by Con Hill. Really? In think, terms of the highlights of the precinct, I think that's basically it. Oh, yes. You didn't mention that. I'm sorry. Um, a few months back, basically the beginning of winter, um, we had a homicide at the 1600 block of Stillwell Avenue. It was a commercial robbery that the owner of that business was basically robbed, kidnapped, and then found, unfortunately, um, killed in another precinct. In regards to that particular incident, uh, we recently arrested two people in regards to that. It was, uh, they were arrested oh, it was thing. Uh, so that case has come to a close as well. That was a while ago, that was last year. <coughs> Thank you, yes. You were talking about the incidences in the shopping center but across the street by the used car dealer. They're parking those cars for sale in the street. Isn't yes. that illegal? Yes, it is. How come nothing is ever done? Because Every it's, time go down that block. it's actually it a different matter, precinct. That's also um, illegal. Yeah. <laughs> it's also illegal. That's no, but you precinct. can't give a ticket for you. Literally, you can't give a ticket for you. We have the side where the shopping plaza is. That's what happened. We have notified the 47th precinct, our counterparts, of that particular issue, and it's really up to them. The traffic guys don't have that ability anymore. They can't write. It's printed. Um, we are your precinct, Lighting Avenue all the way from Matthews down to White Plains Road. The car is a double park that you cannot get down the block. It took us 22 minutes to get from Wallace to White Plains Road on Saturday. I guarantee if you have an officer there giving tickets, you will have your quota for the month three times over. There's no quotas. The alleged quotas. And if you give me a book, I'll be very happy to give the tickets. But the thing is, I can't believe it. It is awful. It is really awful. Bad enough sanitation is doing things for us with the snow, but on top of that, we have cars double parked on every single block. I'll pass that along to the camera. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I call up and I tell him, I'm going to break every window if you don't give me a Thank you. to get rid of this one. Yeah. Take a picture. No I call in the three one one complaint, and then I Facebook it over to um, All right. Great. So we're going to move on to elected officials. Same rule applies for the gallery session speakers. You have two minutes, uh, two questions. And we're going to front load uh, Councilmember Torres' office. I know Romina has somewhere else to go. 